Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's, and I'm looking at a Citroen C4. Uh, it's a 1.6 HDI diesel, and this vehicle has a DPF issue. Somewhere inside the car now, we'll start it up. And we'll see what happens, because it is a bit intermittent. Sometimes the engine light's staying on, and other times it's going out. Yeah, there, it's gone out again. And up on here, it's saying engine repair required. So we'll just go into the diagnostic scan report there. So we have P1445 additive addition. The quantity of added injected is above the upper limit. The particle filter must be replaced. Is that true? Let's find out. So obviously what's happening there, it's the DPF is above the limit, the pressure maybe, and it's trying to inject more additive in. So it's injecting too much additive in to try and counteract the pressure of the DPF to get it clean. Uh, so this one here, down here, I'm not going to pay any attention to this one. Measure of the air mixer, that's relating to the accelerator pedal and the throttle body. Right, we'll go to live data. So it's hard to get this uh, on an angle where you can see the screen. So I'm going to look for the... So there we've got ash level is at 100%. Now, if the ash level is is really at 100%, it will be beyond repair. But you got to bear in mind that that is just a calculation there by the computer. It doesn't actually mean that the ash level is definitely 100%. So the pressure sensor is there, 15 millibars on idle, which is quite high. And let's see what else we can find. Where is the temperature of the exhaust? There. So let's just put all the rows up to the top. So we've got 15 millibars. Let's give it a full acceleration. Two twenty millibars. So yeah, definitely above limit. So we'll try and get it flushed out and see what we can do. So with this sort of stuff here, where it says the ash level is at a hundred percent, and that message uh, on the dashboard there, and the message that comes up on the diagnostics scan. The particle filter must be replaced. So basically, if you went to the dealership, they'd say, you know, there's nothing we can do. That's it. It just needs a new DPF. End of story. Uh, but obviously, we're we're not we're not here to do that. We're here to see if we can just get this back up and running, which I'm pretty sure I can. Right. So I'm going to use this JLM kit to flush out the DPF, and this is a two stage kit. So we're going to use the first one here, and we're going to fill the JLM spray gun here with that. So I'm just using these hose clip pliers here to open the clip here. Now if you follow these tubes down you've got this one here you can just follow it down and you can see that this one goes before the dpf just up here just down here and then the other one goes further down so this is the one before the dpf so i'm going to now try and pull that off if not if it doesn't want to come off like it doesn't i'll use usually my little trim tool here and let me just move that pipe so usually i'll just use the trim tool to get it over the hose and sort of wiggle it left and right to push it down. And we're almost out. You just got to be careful not to break the plastic nozzle on the sensor there. So we've got that off. Now we can insert the tool here from the JLM kit. And just stick that in there. So we've got nine bar of pressure there on the compressor. So now we can squeeze the trigger on the JLM kit here. And we can get that fluid there pushed in. Sorry, it's probably not coming out very clearly on the 
camera here. Put a stop to it and go again. The compressor is just kicking off there because it's getting low on pressure. So that pipe has just burst off there, so I've got to make sure push it in a bit tighter this time, so it's not going to come off again. And we'll we'll continue. So that's all of that fluid in there. Now we're just going to release the bottle here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that. First bottle here, step one, we're going to let that sit for 30 minutes, just to let it soak into the DPF. Then we can go ahead and continue with uh, step two. But we're going to put this in the bottle now and get it ready so it's ready to wait. Okay, stage two there is loaded up, ready to go. But before we do that, we're going to run the engine and flush out stage one first. So just start the engine ready to go there. We'll go back to the live data now. Remember, oh yeah, the sorry, the, the sensor is off, so we're not going to get a reading on that. I've got the uh, flush there on it, so we're just going to give this a few revs. So we'll probably go back out and put the sensor on temporarily just so we can get a read on it so you can see. Okay, so there we are on idle. We have two millibars, we'll give it a full acceleration. 60. You can see that's a massive improvement already there. So we're down from 220 down to 60 millibars. And it's only been running for less than 30 seconds. Okay, we're back out side and we're starting now on stage two, so we're going to push this in. So we'll get all of this pushed into the DPF there, then we'll get back to you. Okay, so you can see we're giving it some revs there to get the push to flow it out and we have got the engine manager light back on again so we'll switch it off and see what happens when we restart it this time it's a bit of a strange one a bit temperamental sometimes it just disappears on its own see their engine fault has come up again engine lights on so we're going to clear the codes now and then we'll take it for a test drive so we're just erasing the code there that's gone now what we're going to do is to reset that ash level to zero, we're going to need to go into hot functions. And we should go to the DPF. See the ash level is just a calculation because it's considering how much pressure is in the DPF. So it's going to then say, okay, the pressure is not lowering, so it must have ash there. So we're going to go with the particle filter replacement. That'll reset all of those values. Turn the ignition off and turn the ignition on again. Off and on and OK. So that should be that. So if we go back to the live data now. Wait for this engine one to load up. We'll go back in there. Go to live data. Exhaust line information. So the total weight of soot in the particle filter totals level of ash in the particle filter. Got them all there. We'll put them to the top so you can see they're all on zero. 
of course when we start the car up the pressure sensor millibars will go up okay now we're going to go back and clear those codes again now that we, we've reset the values we've still got a couple of codes that are there because obviously we didn't clear the values first trouble codes so we're going to turn the ignition off again engine off ignition on erase the codes mileage is one but sorry we cleared at zero one five eight three zero six okay Wait for that to go up. Ignition on. Press OK. Okay, we've got some faults that have. Did that say failed? Let's go back and see if it says it's reading any more codes again. So there is one there for the air mixer still. We still got two faults. Go back in. Intermittent fault is above the particle filter limit. Okay, let's go back. Intermittent measurement of the air mixer against short circuit. And we'll go back and we'll take it for a test drive. Okay, we've just had it on a drive there. So now we're sitting on three millibars at idle. Obviously, we've been giving it some, some hard revs. So we're going to give it a full acceleration. 74 millibars on full acceleration. Three millibars on idle. What we're going to do is go in and see if we can program the additive as it seems like it's, it says it's, it's injecting too much additive, so we might have to uh, readapt it. Let's see what we're going on here. anti knock adaptive values in grams. Hang on, go back. Yeah, so we're going to go in and see. Uh, in the A table, find the total quantity of additive. That is the correct um, program. It's in new ECU. Yes, yeah, so we've got the. I know what the, I know how much is in it. have got 1200 millimeters. Of additive injected into the particle filter. Sorry, uh, let's just go back. I thought this was asking me for how much fluid is in the bottle, but obviously it's not. Uh, so let's just put one, two, enter. That's done. Now see if we can clear the code. So the code was kept reappearing. So erase, erase. We've already been through this. One, three, no. One, five, eight, three, one, three, now. Now we're gonna go into the parts replacement and just Program in a new uh, additive tank. So turn the ignition off. Turn the ignition back on. Learning completed. Replacement of the high pressure pump. No, we've done all the right one. Yes. Yes. Back. Now we'll just try and do a quick erase. Still got two faults there. The main one we're trying to erase today is the additive tank, additive tank fault. 
That's false. I'll just go back in. Usually what I do to do a quick scan again is just go back in and then escape again and I will just read the codes again quickly. Okay, so it's saying that the faults are gone now, so let's go back in and do a proper code read. Make sure they are. Yeah, looks like that's worked, telling it's had a new additive pump. Additive tank, sorry. Start the engine. Go back. Pass. So that's a good result there, because those codes would not clear earlier on. So by telling it it's had a new pump there, uh, we've managed to resolve that. And with this vehicle, I do know that the additive tank is full because we did fill fill the additive tank on this uh, last month. Okay, so we're back from the test drive now and we will go back and just do that quick scan again just to make sure that the codes haven't come back. That's a pass. And um, we'll go back to the... Yeah, yeah, we've I think we've already done the live data, yeah, haven't we? So it's 3 millibars and it had 90 on the full revs so that's it we should be all about finished on this car and we'll see you on the next video